Welcome to China In Focus. I'm Tiffany Meyer. Floods in China are not over. A brief rainstorm is causing a subway station to flood in South China. Passengers hastily fled the station. This as some are seeing parallels to Zhengzhou's subway flood. NTD's Don Ma has more. Yet another underground subway station is flooded in China. This time, it was in South China's biggest city, Guangzhou. Locals there are seen quickly running out of the station. Online videos show large volumes of water rushing into the Shenzhou subway station. That's after a brief rainstorm hit the region on Friday. The rainwater completely submerged the train tracks. Water levels rose rapidly and rushed deep into the station. Staff and passengers evacuated hastily. Authorities say that the rainwater got into the station because construction workers knocked down a water barrier wall. Drainage systems were also overwhelmed. Authorities have since suspended services at the affected stations. Many see parallels to the deadly subway flood in Zhengzhou recently. But fortunately, the flood this time wasn't as serious. The affected subway line is close to 40 miles long and has 21 stations. Don Ma, NTD News. Chinese athletes are winning lots of medals at the Tokyo Olympics, but they are apologizing for not winning gold medals. Chinese netizens and officials are also angry over many other things at the Games. Some critics say the mentality of gold medals only has pushed Chinese athletes over the edge. As of Friday, China is the top country on the Olympics gold medal table. But Chinese athletes failed to win as many gold medals as their country had expected. For example, they were expected to win gold in table tennis mixed doubles. China's state-owned TV station had even announced their victory before the game ended. But their Japanese opponents eventually beat them in the final minutes and China got silver. They announced that before the game ended, as if China had won the gold medal. What they meant was, China must have this gold medal. They are not watching the games. They only look at the medal table. The medal first mentality has gotten people out of control. Chinese athletes are under a lot of pressure. The two table tennis players apologized for only bringing home a silver medal. One of them, Liu Shiwen, cried during an interview, saying, I've disappointed my team and disappointed all of you. Chinese athletes from the men's gymnastics team also apologized for their bronze medal. But why? Chinese athletes are only allowed to win. They cannot afford to lose. Because the so-called expectation of the nation, the approval of their kinsmen, and the pressure from their government all forced them to win. The New York Times says China's sports training system has only one goal, that is, winning gold for the so-called glory of the nation. The New York Times quoted the head of the Chinese Olympic Committee right before the Tokyo Games, saying, We must resolutely ensure we are first in gold medals. Many cities in China are seeing a rise in CCP virus cases. Local communities are being locked down, and masses are seen lining up for virus testing. In some cities, including Beijing, residents are panic buying en masse. NDD's Don Ma brings us more. A virus outbreak that began in China's Jiangsu province is spreading. Starting from Nanjing City, the virus has transmitted to at least 15 cities and seven provinces. That's including the country's capital. Authorities are enforcing mandatory lockdowns in districts across different cities. Up to hundreds of people in Beijing are seen lining up at virus testing locations. Residents are feeling uneasy about the situation. At some locations, locals are panic buying en masse. An online video shows a supermarket in Beijing with entire store shelves being almost empty. This as people try to buy what's left. A similar situation is seen at markets in the capital city of Sichuan province. Entrances to some Beijing communities were also sealed off and without notice. One local resident was out for a stroll and found that he couldn't return home. As of Friday, at least 10 communities in Beijing have been locked down. On Thursday, authorities issued notices telling residents there to self-isolate. A video shows virus protection personnel forcibly dragging someone to a quarantine facility. The rise in virus cases comes despite 80% of Beijing's population have been vaccinated. This according to official data. They also got China's homegrown shots. Don Ma, NTD News. 
Judges said today the first person convicted under Hong Kong's national security law was sentenced to nine years for terrorist activities and inciting secession. It's a watershed ruling with long-term implications for the city's judicial landscape. 24-year-old former waiter Tong Ying Kiet was charged with terrorist activities inciting secession. He was accused of driving his motorcycle into three riot police last year after carrying a flag with the protest slogan, Liberate Hong Kong, Revolution of Our Times. The phrase was ubiquitous during Hong Kong's mass pro-democracy protests in 2019. But judges ruled that the slogan was capable of inciting others to commit secession. Human rights groups, including Amnesty International, have criticized Tong's conviction. They say it imposes new limits on free speech and a fair trial. Tong did not get a trial by jury because of a perceived risk of the personal safety of jurors. He was also denied bail in line with a provision of the national security law that puts the onus on the defendant to prove they would not be a security threat if released. Tong did not testify during the trial but pleaded not guilty to all charges. A British Navy carrier strike group is sailing through the South China Sea. China state-run media is warning them, saying they must obey the rules. Beijing claims the waters, despite an international court ruling against them. NTD's Neil Woodrow brings us the details. China's state-run newspaper Global Times published an editorial after the Royal Navy's Carrier Strike Group, or CSG, entered the South China Sea on Sunday. The editorial threatens stern action against the CSG if it does not obey the rules. It suggested Beijing would make an example out of Britain, using the phrase, to execute one is a warning to a hundred. Defence Secretary Ben Wallace set the scene earlier this month for a confrontation with Beijing when he said the CSG would sail on any route allowed under international law. A Ministry of Defence spokesperson told NTD the carrier strike group is lawfully navigating the South China Sea, just as one-third of global shipping does on an annual basis. The spokesperson said UK forces are not going to the other side of the world to be provocative. The Chinese regime has grown increasingly assertive as it builds military bases and airport runways on constructed islands in the South China Sea. This is despite an international court ruling in 2016 that the area does not belong to China. I spoke with a researcher at the Henry Jackson Society who follows developments Uh, in the South China Sea closely. Uh, What's your opinion of uh, China's warning uh, in relation to the CSG appears to be travelling through international waters in a peaceful manner? Well, Britain are quite right to travel through these international waters. And I think what we see from China is a lot of hot air. Um, Britain isn't the first liberal democracy to conduct freedom of navigation operations through the South China Sea. And it certainly won't be the last one. And uh, Britain carried out a similar sort of move back in 2018. And uh, admittedly, the Chinese Navy uh, trailed our, our vessels. And uh, I suspect they do something similar. But uh, the kind of hyperbolic uh, rhetoric coming from Beijing, I think, is a uh, is bluff uh, designed to deter um, future operations and to appeal to a domestic audience. I asked him to explain more about appealing to a domestic audience. Well, the Chinese Communist Party lacks uh, legitimacy. Um, we all know that uh, the people of China uh, do not vote for them and, and cannot remove them. And therefore, they've had to rely on delivering the economic goods and fanning the flames of Chinese nationalism in order to justify their rule. The tensions come after Foreign Secretary Dominic Raab said he had discussed the CSG route with his Chinese counterpart, and the deployment was being done in a confident but not confrontational way. Neil Woodrow, NTD News. A new report exposes threats posed by China's Belt and Road Initiative. It looks into how Beijing has used debt trap diplomacy to get access to resources at the expense of other nations' sovereignty. And it is Patrick Hayden has the details. The Captive Nations Coalition has released a report showing how the Chinese Communist Party is trying to dominate the world. It's written from a U.S. national security and human rights perspective. We need to recognize internationally that the Communist Party of China is a transnational criminal organization. Beijing's Belt and Road Initiative is a multi-trillion dollar project billed as an investment plan. Logerson says 140 UN recognized countries have signed on to it. Under the project, China pours funding into critical infrastructure around the world. 
including ports, highways and railroads. Critics say Beijing uses it to gain influence over countries, leaving relatively poorer nations in debt and taking control of newly funded infrastructure, and above all, using it as an influence circle to counter the West. Looking at the Belt and Road debt-to-GDP ratio shows China basically owns others already. And what we find is that the debt-to-GDP ratio for some of these countries, especially Mongolia, owes you know, 76% debt-to-GDP. Mongolia is owned by China. It's a democracy, but it is literally owned by China. You see this also in um, Pakistan that owns a quarter of its debt-to-GDP. Although Canada hasn't signed up, it's still supporting Beijing's initiative. Canada is included because it supports mechanisms that support the Belt and Road Initiative. They haven't signed on to any loans that are specifically Belt and Road, but they are involved in the supporting mechanisms. So we see them as an emerging CCP threat. The West has recently banded together to give less wealthy countries an option to borrow instead of using China. It's called the Build Back Better World. It is important that these countries be um, uh, supported in their desire to grow um, stronger. And, and it is important that um, the free countries of the world that remain uh, provide an alternative to what China is offering through the Belt and Road Initiative. From a human rights perspective, the Captive Nations Coalition is raising awareness of human rights abuses in China, including genocide. It sees the forcible capture of China's bordering countries, Tibet, East Turkestan and southern Mongolia, as enslaving those countries. Patrick Hayden, NTD News. And today we have a special report on Epoch TV. In it, we look at a huge headache for the U.S. and its allies, cyber attacks from China. For years, cyber attacks have been a huge headache for the U.S. and its allies. Now, for the first time, they are formally calling out one of the biggest sources in charge behind the scenes. New this morning, the U.S. is joining with allies around the world to call out the Chinese government for a series of cyber intrusions. This prosecution is unique. This case is about a cyber hacking an economic espionage campaign led by the government of China. In a special report, we look at just who are these Chinese hackers, how the regime uses the attacks to achieve their strategic goals. Unsurprisingly, the intrusions targeted industries outlined in the Made in China 2025 plan. How Beijing is building a massive database full of details about average Americans. We're talking about people's health histories, their criminal histories. And what tools the U.S. has to stop it. Be sure to check out our report on Epoch TV. Be sure to check it out on Epic TV. China in Focus is partnering with the platform. That's where you can watch our exclusive content every Friday night. To subscribe, click epochtv.com slash China in Focus. Thanks for watching and see you next time.